Hey guys, and welcome to this is Mr. Fourth Dimension. Welcome to another episode of the Geo Project. So we finished up some angle stuff last time, and I want to take a uh, dive now into a slightly different but related topic, um, and that is areas of triangles. And we're just going to make a general purpose area of triangle function first, or maybe we'll make more than one. Uh, we're going to look at what we're going to do today. And then maybe we'll make some optimized versions for right triangles and things if we want to be able to just speed things up with those easier formulas that are like one half height times base or whatever. One half height, yeah, that's the formula. I can't remember exactly how it's normally phrased. But um, to that end, I did a little bit of Googling beforehand and found a website that uh, has some alternative uh, triangle areas. So this is the one we might do later. I'm thinking it's not going to be too often that we're going to know the base and height of a triangle. Um, but this is really just to get us introduced to triangles and messing with triangles anyway. So, um, I mean, uh, how often we're going to want to compute area, I'm not sure about that uh, in the future, how useful that is actually in most cases. But there's a couple other formulas. There's a formula when you know the length of three sides, which we can find the length of three sides easily on any triangle. Or when we know the that we have two we have an angle between two lines here. Now, if we wanted to do this one, uh, one thing to keep in mind is we would have to be careful not to measure the large outside angle. So we'd have to make a version of the angle measuring functions that always gives you a smaller version. So I think we're going to start by trying to implement that, and that'll be our transition from angles to this. Is we're going to make a function that always gives the smaller version. Um, whether that's the positively oriented or negatively oriented angle. And the way that'll work will just be um, real 32 geo 3 point angle uh, small, well we'll just call it 3 point angle, this will be the simple version that we don't force an orientation so it'll do a little more work but give us the um, the acute angle, or not the acute angle but the less than or equal to pi angle. Alright, so this will take the same stuff that the other angle measures will do. It's going to take, um, it's going to do the same sort of work that either one of these might have done. So we'll take three point angle positive, for example. And maybe there's an efficient way to do this that we're skipping past right now, and so we'll have to put it to do here to say is there a faster way to implement this? Um, and then what we do is if a positive angle is greater than pi, then we just do positive angle equals, we take the full circle and we subtract that out. So that means the positive angle is the larger one, so subtract out, get the negative. So that actually is converting it to the negative, and it's no longer the positive angle. So maybe that's not the right name for it. Let's just call it the angle. All right. So that'll always give us the, uh, the smaller one, and adds one more if to what we had to do to make this work. So, like I said, maybe that's not the most efficient way. Maybe we'll think about it and find another one. But for now, we're just going to plug out the fastest one, or the easiest to write thing we can think of. Now, let's do a three-point area. Using this formula, though, there's two options we could do. We could have a thing where we plug in three points, and it uh, figures out the area. Or we can have a thing where we plug in the lengths and the angle, and it gives us the area. I'm going to start with lengths and angles, since that's the literal form. And then um, what we'll have is we'll make a function that takes three points, and it'll always just we'll like time all of our options. So we'll maybe make this one as well later on. And then whichever one of these is faster to compute in general from the three points, because maybe it's faster to take this side length, and maybe it's faster to take this angle, and maybe once you have the three sides, this is still too slow or whatever, right? So we'll figure out which of these two is faster when all you have is the three points. We'll figure that out later. So for now, we're just going to start with two side lengths and the angle in between. So we'll call this triangle area um, si side angle side. Yeah, side angle side. And um, then we're going to have uh, 
side one, uh, angle, and then side two. We'll make those long form names. And then the formula is you take the, the, uh, the two sides, um, multiply them together times a half, and then take a sine of the angle and multiply that in. So it's just as simple as return 0.5 times side 1 times side 2 times math sine of the angle. Now we'll see we have to pop over to the uh, math file real quick and add this new um, trig function. Whoops, inline internal uh, math sine real 32 x return sine x cool um, so that should be able to compute this the uh, area of a triangle if we know its side and another side uh, two sides and the angle in between those sides so let's put this to the test um, easiest way to test this first will be on triangles we know the answer to. So we're going to make a, a triangle in our mind we're going to imagine that has um, uh, you know, a right angle so that we can figure out the base and the height quite easily. And it'll be, um, let's give it a base of like 4 and a height of 2, so the entire area should be 2, right? And that means that it has one side length of 2, one side length of 4, and an angle of 90 degrees or of pi over 4. So, real 32 area equals geo triangle area SAS. The side lengths will be 2.f, um, or just, I should just say 2 as a float, um, pi over 4, or like this, quarter of a pi and then 4. And we'll print that off and see what we got. Whoops. There we go. Ooh. Getting ahead of myself. Let's see. What is the warning here? That should be an F. Let's see if there's anything else that is warning about. Conversion from... No, that's it. Left of point F must have... Uh, 0.25 point F, that's wrong. And geo triangle area SAS. The function does not take two arguments. Okay, that should be fixed. Undeclared identifier. Oh, there it is. Hmm, it's not what we expected, was it? We were expecting four. Did we get this idea wrong here? That should be half of pi, right? That should be half of pi. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so half of a quarter of pi is a 45 degree angle. So we can do that now too. We can say we have a right triangle and uh, we'll pick Pythagorean numbers. So. Um, leg lengths of 3 and 4. Um, well, I don't know the the area for that then. Okay, so we'll do a leg length of 3 and 3, let's say. But we're going to take one of those leg lengths. We're going to take the angle of a quarter of a circle, right? A 45 degree angle or a quarter pi angle. Now, what's the leg length of the hypotenuse on that triangle? That's the question. Um, well, if the side length is 3, then it is um, the square root of 6, right? Or, there's supposed to be a rule for this. It's like square root of 2 times the side length or something like that. Um, I'm trying to remember the rules on this. Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells me that the hypotenuse has to be... Um, okay, not it would be square root of 18, which would be 3 square roots of 2, right? So that does work out. So let's do it this way. Maybe we want constants for square roots of 2 and 3 and stuff. Um, let's put a to-do in for that. Constants for common square roots. Alright, let's run that.
Yeah, so 4.5 is right, because if the, the triangle we're doing has two legs that are both 3, but 3 and 3, and that should be half of the square. So if we took a square that was 3 by 3, it would be 9. So half of that should be 4.5. So again, looks like we're getting the right answers from that. Now let's try um, wrapping this in a function that takes three points. So geo, we'll call this uh, triangle area three point. Or we could just call this a three point area, I think is even better. Um, the three point area will take the same exact sort of signature as a three point angle function. And then we're going to compute um, side one as, uh, let's take the distance from A to B. So geo distance, whoops, where did it go? There we go. Geo distance, not direction, geo distance from A to B. The geo distance from A to C. And then we need the um, angle of geo three point angle from, let's see, B, A in the middle, C, right? Because we're using A as the center here. So we took the distance from A to B. Then we took a distance from A to C. And we're looking for the angle that combines those two lines. So. A is it got to be the middle point there, and then we just return uh, geo triangle area SAS side one angle side two. So now let's try the same exact sort of test, but we're gonna instead of um, let's pop this up here um, instead of using the triangle area, we'll just use three points. Uh, whoops, that should be area. There we go. <clears throat> so those three points can be um, you know, zero, zero. Um, if we're going to do, uh, let's do the same triangle we were just doing first. So three, zero, and then zero, Three. Yeah, and the order shouldn't matter, so I should be able to put this first, for example. Alright, so we get a tiny bit of rounding error when we mess around with that, but it does seem to work. Yeah, that's all cool. So, that works. Um, and I think uh, we're going to do one more test, and we'll be good for today. We also want to test um, the first version we were doing, which is 2 and 4. Um, right, and then that one, uh, we're expecting an answer of 4. Yeah, this looks pretty solid. Whoops. That was not so solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit of rounding error again. That'll be in there. So it looks like, well, how many digits is that? One, two, three, four, five, six digits. So I'll make a note of that. Um rounding error uh, noticed or um, present at uh, what was that the not tenth not hundredth not thousandth the hundred millionth thousand ten thousand is that right the six digits to the right, so at ten to the negative six, I'll say. That's the easy way to denote that. All right, cool. So I think that's a nice little bit of progress. We also want to make sure we put a to do here. Uh, optimize three point area. 
with quickest um, triangle formula option. All right. So next time we'll keep messing with triangle formulas, and soon we'll have a nice way to we'll we'll pull, pull out our timer and we'll optimize the three-point area function. All right. See you guys next time.